Alright, we are continuing with our VFX for Architects video samples and today we are going to do some fireplace effects. In order to do a cool looking dynamic fire for our chimneys or anything that is uh, burning like a fireplace, we have uh, our model here and we're going to use Phoenix FD in order to get those flames going. So as you can see here, I got my charcoals and I got my model. So I've detached that middle part from uh, the rest of the charcoals since it just makes more sense that the fire is not going to be everywhere and only in the middle part of that. So I'll press Alt Q and isolate my uh, model. This is what we're going to work with. And before we start, let me just uh, double check that our unit system setup is set to centimeters. In order to get the same results by following these tutorials, you got to make sure that you're working with centimeters and your resulting accuracy got this number in order to get the same size scale for the fire flames. Okay, now that been tweaked, we're also going to adjust our timeline in order to uh, get some sequence out which is going to be from 0 to 60. Everything by default, we're going to use the NTSC. So um, that's our setup. Now we're also going to use some verticolor in order to get the fire only on top and not everywhere. So before we do that, let's just add some fire effect. We're going to use that uh, Phoenix FD with a burn fuel so you just click on it you can see it's been created here uh, of course you need to select the model first and then click it now let's adjust it a little bit uh, to match match the size something like this and uh, by selecting it I can go to my simulation here and um, let's just click start and see how the simulation going as default so we can start the simulation from here or from that uh, panel here so click just play and let the simulation run you can see the fire being created right away but um, looks kind of bad doesn't have any shape to it uh, looks pretty choppy with uh, with no um, continuity and velocity to the flames so I'm just going to let the simulation through in order to see how really this fire works. Alright, simulation is done. It took 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Here we can see uh, how long it's going to take. And of course you need to free some RAM because small simulations like that can easily take up to 3-4 gigs um, on your disk. So make sure to have enough space to run those simulations. Okay, so if I'll click play here, you can see our fire been created and uh, it's not that great looking, very choppy, doesn't have any shapes and we have this also smoke uh, that's coming on the way. So let's just close the smoke. So in the preview, I'm going to go down here to uh, lighting and just disconnect it. It still be rendered, but we will not be able to see it. So we can concentrate on making our flames looking good. All right. So first thing, uh, if you notice, the fire kind of comes from everywhere. And that's what I mentioned earlier. We want to have it only um, on the top portion of our circle. So we can fix that by adding a color vertex, uh, vertex paint to it. And with the vertex paint, Let's go here to frame zero. Let's fill it up with black. So everything gotta be black here. If you use the bucket, it will fill it up immediately. Okay. Now what we wanna do is reduce the size here to about uh, ten, and let's switch color to white, and just lightly pinch. Oops too much so let's do five it's a little bit too much too let's do about three yeah and lightly pinch like that those uh, areas where we want the fire to appear that will kind of give us more uh, realistic look 
because the fire doesn't really go from the underneath the charcoal it kind of appears on top of it so let's color this it can be a little bit more creative I'm gonna go fast with this one so we we'll get uh, faster to our fire but again I like to isolate those stones and uh, those charcoal stones and just to give the areas on those tips of those guys okay so I think that's good enough for our example here so we can move on with the tutorial okay looking good now we can continue so nothing beneath make sure that beneath you don't get the the color so let's just fix that really quickly okay. good all right now let's come back to our model and play a little bit with the quality of the grid and the quality of the fire so let's select our uh, fire here go to the grid this is where we get to do the scale the proper scale so we can reduce that let's do 80 and uh, let's do here 82 here let's do 70 actually here let's do 40 okay so something like this just to cover up and um, our scene needs to be the scene scale let's put 1.5 and the cell size to 0.65 that will give us really nice quality here so as you see if I'm reducing the cell size my total cells here increasing it's already 5 million so the more of those I have the heavier um, the more quality I'm gonna get well, of course the heavier the files uh, the renders uh, quality of those fires is gonna be so somewhere here close to million total cells is is a good size for our example okay now let's fix our grid also change here to smoke threshold point two extra merging to five and we're gonna get expand don't shrink so every time we do the fire it will expand if it needs to go above uh, above the units now let's select our fire and do some adjustments to it here so the outgoing velocity let's do it 400 and let's do the temperature on and the smoke on but let's disconnect the fuel so we will not have any burning fuel here and here let's do the particles 2.5 the method is drag texture map and export drag particles IDs we're gonna have little particles kind of simulating and adding to this whole thing so we'll get a little bit more realistic fire going on and next thing is going to adjust is uh, the output of that fire so let's go down here to the output And make sure we reduce the backup intervals to zero and disconnect the fuel and connect velocity so we stay with the temperature smoke and velocity here uh, and the path and the output is the scene path so everywhere you save the scene you're gonna find a folder where all the stuff being exported there and saved again you gotta have enough space because those files are big let's move next and disconnect the fuel burning so fuel we're not gonna use that now uh, it's a good time to simulate uh, I have here two cameras one is far and one is close so uh, let's click play and simulate that see how this goes Oh, we forgot to connect our uh, vertex, so I'm going to stop this because we see fires going everywhere. It's pretty strong. So what we're going to do is select our fire. And now um, 
in this mask we need to put here our vertex color now let's click play and we can see that the fire is not coming from all the directions just coming from uh, where we selected where we actually placed the vector map so it's going up still some of the fires going kind of down so we need to fix that and just leave it uh, leave it on top so I'm gonna stop the simulation and fix those here because um, I really don't want this fire to go uh, more than it needs to so again you can see it's a very delicate work but it controls the fire flames many flames related to the area that they been uh, produced from so if this area is big of course the flames are going to be much bigger and stronger but if the areas are much smaller it's also going to affect the flame size so in order to have really nice small flames you gotta put some work in order to make your vertex color vertex map uh, reduced and very minimal and kind of fit those areas and so that nothing will go here and be uh, coming from below so small pinches on top will give you a really nice result for, for the color for the fire all right so this looks good already now let's delete our let's select select and delete yes i'm sure and uh, now let's run this again all right so you can see the fire became much uh, smaller the areas that it's coming from were reduced you can reduce it even more if you want to have like really minimal uh, small fire flames uh, you can do it as well but in order to see how the flame works you still need to have a big portion big enough in order to produce and see the flames all right simulation was done in five minutes and 33 seconds as you know we bump out some quality so again it took a little bit more time but now uh, it's looking much better we still have some things coming out from the bottom that i need to fix it's probably those guys so uh, i do always kind of optimize and fix those things uh, along the way not everything can come out perfect in the first time you know so if you need to fix something while you're rendering and fixing the flames um, you know just go go and take care of it I can see some color here in between so let's reduce that a little bit so we get a little bit more natural realistic results here and I also like to go like in, even in between maybe like break it down a little bit somewhere here so it will be like more random some some places the fire will gather more some places less so something like this it would work better okay but if we play our flame you can see we're starting getting much nicer shapes to it and the particles are being expanded a little bit too much in my opinion I'm gonna limit those as well All right so let's take our uh, phonics dynamics here and uh, Let's change some parameters. So the time scale, let's put 0.6 and the cooling 0.1. So the flames will cool down faster. It's really uh, effective. We don't want to have really long flames. Uh, smoke dissipation, let's put 0.3. So we'll suppress it a little bit. It only works with the smoke. And the rest of this, let's zero it out 
because we don't need that. Everything zero. Dynamics, let's put it zero. Buffered in the method for the conservation. Uh, let's reduce the quality to 40. Disconnect, disconnect the uniform density and the multipass at two steps. I think that's going to be good. So let's simulate it one more time and compare to what we saw now. So let's just play it. So we will see um, how long are the flames and the shapes of the flames are going. Now let's simulate with those dynamics and see how this affects our scene. So we can already see from the beginning that all the flames kind of became more danced and more organized and when they're shooting up the air they're having a more flammable tail per se and um, the dynamics of the fire became more more solid more dense and more believable in my opinion now what is missing for this one is a little bit of wind you know we can add different wind effects here in order to have kind of slightly shape uh, and direction of fire because fire always get affected by small winds here and there if you have a big opening a window something will cause the fire uh, it's not going to go straight so it's going to have a little bit of those little different bends here and there but in general we can already see that our fire is working much better when getting much better shapes thanks to the adjustment we did in the dynamics all right so this simulation took six minutes and 19 seconds a little bit longer even though we reduced uh, the quality by 40 you can see that now our flames are working much better but uh, again what's missing here is some wind to it again the flames are a little bit too big so we can reduce some of the white areas with velocity I'm gonna put this on two and with the brush gonna work some of those areas in order to reduce the flames because still those flames are good maybe for the some big fire but not for a small chimney or a small fireplace so let's get that in a proper size in order to get this a little bit more believable we don't want to overdo it but at least now we can see how our flames are looking and how the size is looking. And, uh, it's about time to get some wind into this one. So we have helpers and in the helpers we have the Phoenix HFD and we can add plane force right here. Let's uh, rotate this flame force 90 degrees and uh, let's position that so we can see it right here all right so we'll have wind coming from this direction and um, let's put the strength of our force to 250 and drag is 0 0.01 everything stays by default here and now let's click play and simulate All right we can already see that uh, the wind is affecting and we're getting a little bit more uh, 
randomized, a little bit more stylized fire. Again, it's always uh, good to have those kind of forces that will give some direction and most of the time you have to look where the openings are. If you have an open window or an open door, most of the time you will have those, uh, some of those areas or a big opening area that will kind of affect uh, the fire. My chimney, my fireplace in this situation is kind of standing between the two rooms and I have a big opening which I'm going to show you later. So it does make sense to put uh, a wind force, a simple force in order to give my fire uh, character. You know, you don't have to do it, it's just an option. And if you, uh, if you do it, you can do it very minimal. You don't have to put 250 uh, centimeters in the strength. You can do it much less, but still it will not just go straight up. It will have some direction and, cover and uh, recover back to the to the normal stage that's how the fire works it gets some wind but then it kind of recovers back and then it gets a little bit more so you can see how those flames uh, getting that nice direction of the wind we have more options here in the uh, forces so you are more than welcome to experiment with the phoenix uh, turbulence fractal depth there are much cooler variations for this so if you really want to dig into this you're more than welcome to test other forces. Now for our rendering, let's uh, see how we can uh, how we can get this fire rendered nicely. So if I click, let me see here. If I click on my render everything by default. So that's how my fire looks. Um, not that great. And um, again, this whole thing is uh, looking pretty uh, chaotic and doesn't have any shape to the flame. So those are getting lost. How we can do this, how we can shape it. Uh, it takes a lot of time to get nice results for the fire in order to get it rendered properly. So for the rendering here, Cows Group provided us with a file. I'm going to load it here. It's from the burning chair exercise, but I'm going to share it with you guys. We can download and have um, the same results. So this thing was loaded successfully. And those are the parameters that were added and changed to our volumetric output. So you can see in our fire, we have this nice diagram. This is what we actually loaded now here with the temperature. We still have to do sm some small adjustments here in order to get it right. But if I click render now, you can see that our fire working much nicer and it's getting, uh, let me get near camera. So you can see that it's getting much nicer detail here to our fire. Let me get it a little bit bigger so we will see what we're actually getting. Um, let's do the HD uh, quality. All right, so you can see our fire looking very, very much realistic with this color change that uh, Chaos Group provi provided us with. Okay, so let's do some small uh, changes here. So in this, we don't need to do anything with the fire. In this diagram, just make sure you are set to smoke. And those parameters here and here, 170 is the right way to go. Okay, so basically most of the information came from the file, but those uh, small adjustments just job, double check that they are pretty correct. Okay, so after doing this, what we can add is a little bit of a glow to our fire. So you can see I'm disconnecting and connecting it. So we got a small glow here. Let's reduce it to a, something like that. And we can also add some glare effect to it. And let's reduce that a little bit too. So something like this will look much nicer. So this is without those. 
And this is with a little glare and a little bloom effect. All right. Now what we can do is let's just unhide our chimney. Let's see how this been rendered here. The results are pretty good. Now what we can do, let's take this frame. I want to zoom in a little bit more so we can see our fire a little better. Like that. Don't forget to activate your save frame so we will know what exactly you're rendering. I'm going to go to my rendering settings, set up to active segment. So I'm going to render from 0 to 60. HDTV, 720p, and here are parameters pretty simple, very low quality, so we won't get uh, much of that uh, really sharp effect, but we have the denoiser that will clear up the noise. So 1-1 one, one minimum subdivisions, and uh, the parameter is pretty simple. I'm not going to do any GI for this because I want to render it faster. And um, let's just go ahead and render this. Fire, place. And I'm not going to render in a very high quality. It's going to say fit JPEGs for the sake of this idea, just to show you guys what we came up with. All right. So this thing is done. The render simulation is done. Now we can render our sequence. All right, and the render is done. It took about uh, seven minutes, more or less. And uh, let's go check it out what we have rendered. So excited to see what we came up with. I'm going to use this small software called uh, DJ View. Let's see what we've got. Dracaris. Ah, oh, this looks awesome. The fire looks very realistic. And um, I'm so pleased with this plugin, Phoenix FD. Our upcoming training going to have more complicated uh, procedures. We're going to do time remapping. We're going to do some cool slow-mo for the fire effects. So stay tuned for the next upcoming videos. Share it, like it. This is Alex, your Beery Guys. Talk soon. Ciao.